Hi, I'm Scott Hansman. It's Azure Friday. We're here with David Ebo talking about Kudu and Azure websites. Uh, so I've deployed uh, from GitHub. I've deployed from Git. Uh, I'm starting to get a sense of how that deployment occurs, though. But is there an opportunity for me to, to get in there and change the deployment or maybe copy a file or run a unit test? Yes. So what happens by default is that we have a deployment script that we use, which kind of depends on the type of apps. But for uh, like a, an ASP.NET web application, uh, pretty much what the script does is run MS build with various params that produce artifacts and those get deployed. Mm -hmm. But we have an opportunity to create what we call a custom deployment script. Once you do that, you essentially get a batch file, which initially does exactly the same things as what would happen without the script. Mm -hmm. But then you get to hack on it and make it do other interesting things. So if I make this default batch file and then just deploy again, it's the same deploy I've been doing the whole time? Absolutely. And it's a batch file if I'm doing an ASP.NET application, and it's a bash yes. file if I'm doing like yes. a node type of a That's thing. That's right. I mean, technically, you can do batch or bash for either of them. But in most cases, people will do batch with ASP.NET and bash with, you know, if you need to run on the Mac. And OK, cool. Yeah. So let's use the Azure Friday site that we made before okay. we did our initial deployment. And I've also gone and I've installed the uh, cross-platform command line. Yes. This is where you can type Azure and uh, get a whole series of control things. And we'll do a whole series of videos on this command line and how this works. Uh, and this has some really powerful stuff where I say Azure site list, for example. And we can see the list of sites. Uh, the deployment script is going to be an act that I'm going to do on, there it is. This is my Azure Friday. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? So. Azure site, and then what do I say? You say deployment script. Deployment script, and it knows which site because that's the folder that we're in. Um, I don't rec I, Yes, I think it does. Let's hope but so. But I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> we'll if it doesn't, it will ask you for the site. All right, and we'll find out in enough. a minute. OK, so I said Azure site deployment script, and I've got a whole series of things here. Repository root. Yes. So what you need in this case, uh, you know, not all, not all of the options are available in uh, all the project types. In right. this case, it's a web application, so you'd want to slash uh, this one, ASP WAP. ASP WAP. Okay, as opposed to a website which doesn't have a project file. Correct. Okay. So uh, dash dash ASP WAP. And uh, WAP. WAP. Pardon me. Yes. And then do and I then have the CS project. The CS project is going to be in the subfolder. Okay. So where is probably web application seven slash. That's right. Okay. And now you need also the solution file because it needs to know the location of that. And that should be right here. Okay. And that should be all. And if it doesn't know what site it's for, I'm hoping it'll ask you. Okay, cool. And I don't have to say what kind of site it was because it'll figure well, it did. out. This is what ASP Web. Oh, ASP tells Web it. is the type. Is the type of site. Okay, yes. excellent. So I hit that. Executing. It knows project okay. and solution. Yeah. Yes. Oh, here you go. And generating yes. for oh, .NET actually, web application. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking the, it actually doesn't need to know what site it's for because it's a, th that doesn't do any operation that talks to Azure at this point. It's ah. just generating files. Okay, so I hit uh, dir and uh, deploy.cmd. I've never seen that before. You can see the date yes. is just this moment, and then dot deployment. So I've got two yes. files well, let's there. Let's look at the little one first. Let's look at the little one, which is very simple. Ah, All it's it tells an it file. Is, yes. <laughs> That's the format, yeah. So uh, might be questionable, but that's no. It, hey, <laughs> it's a little tiny text file. Actually, we'll do it like that. Yes. So all this is saying is at the time things need to be deployed, the command to run is deploy.cmd. Okay. And that happens to be the other batch file, which we'll look at. Are there other things I can put in here other than commands? Yes. Yes. There are things you can uh, tell it. I mean, in fact, there are tweaks that you can do if you don't have a custom deployment script, and if you want to do some amount of tweaking, but not to the level of the custom deployment script. For instance, you could tell it, well, I have my repo, but I have three MVC apps in there. You could tell it which one to deploy. Ah, uh, once so you have project a equals, and it's in that folder. That's right. But once you have a custom deployment script, that actually becomes part of your batch file, because now you own the whole process. OK. So I, own the, I can do anything I want to, merge them or whatever makes me happy. Yes. So here, this file is, you know, it, it's somewhat large, and there's some some parts in the beginning that are more just setting things up. Okay. But the only part that's uh, truly interesting, if you go down, okay, uh, I'm noticing a number of uh, environment variables. Yes, these are things that get set uh, by Kudu on the server before running this batch file, so that you know there's you can find the, all the relevant folders. Oh. Other interesting thing I should mention is that this file is generated in a way that you can actually run it locally. 
Ah. The idea is that you know you write a batch file, you want to test it. Yeah. So, so that, deploy that's why, CMD yes. could work locally. That's right. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why it's kind of big in the beginning because mm -hmm. we say, well, if this environment variable is not defined, let's default it to something because all of the question. things that Azure will inject won't exist on your local machine. So. That's great because it wouldn't be useful if I couldn't run it locally. Yes. So here I can see line 70 if we're doing a deployment. MS build, and then there's web application 7, so that's what it's yes. going to build, and yes. we, we told right. it that. And then it has some uh, rather fancy flags that it's passing to, to, to build, which are you know right. existing uh, VS flag, but Making sure it's in the end, it's just building your solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, and, yeah. well, no, and, it, and then there's this step, it's like two step. First, two it steps. builds it. So this is Second, build. it does this thing called kudu sync, which okay. pretty much means copy the artifacts to the web root. Ah, okay. So it doesn't actually do the build in place. It gets everything ready and then it copies it over to where the actual yes, web root is. That's right. Yes. Okay. So where would I do something if I wanted to, like, say hello or hello um, world here? Pretty much anywhere. If you go up a bit, I think there's already some echo handling. Like you just add oh. another echo or okay. change this line. Uh, uh. So I could say, hey, fancy pants. And I could do whatever, right? Yes. Now, what if I wanted an executable? If I wanted to say, like, um, I don't know, send an SMS or tell someone that something happened. Yeah, you could do all that. I mean, you just have to make sure that whatever tool you need to, to call is part of your repo, either part of your repo or that you have some logic to download it on the fly, which you could have. You know, some people don't, you know, checking in binary is always the, the bad thing. So right. you, you can literally do a call to bring down some executable, which you can then run okay. and it becomes sort of part of your build. So let's see that actually happen. Now I say get status, those new files are not tracked. Yes. So I'll go and add them and then commit them, uh, new custom deployment. And uh, where am I going to go to? Azure Master? Yes. Okay. So that's going up there. I see the remote. Oh, there, look at that. That's your message. So that remote, that actually ran up there. My echo was run up there and then sent back down here and it's telling me that it happened. That's right. Okay, cool. So show me a little bit more advanced example of maybe like running unit tests. Okay, so I have another app uh, in the folder. So MVC with X unit tests. Yes, yes. So if you look at the deploy.cmd, okay. that's a, a, a more complex example of what you can do with this. And in this particular case, here's deployment. It's basically running uh, X unit ah. on the code. So you I see here on line 70 you're building the website. That's the same thing we saw before. Line 73 here, you're actually building another whole project. Yes. The reason for that is that when we do the, the standard build for the, the project, for the MVC app itself, it does a minimal build, which means it won't build your unit test project because we're not building like the full solution to right. optimize. So it needs to separately build the unit test project to make sure it's not left out. Okay. Once it's built, uh, you pretty much throw XUnit at the uh, unit test DLL and it's... And you're calling XUnit directly from the packages folder because XUnit was added as a yes, NuGet package. that's right. Yeah, coming back to what I said earlier, I said you could download the tool or you could just use, in this case, NuGet to get it. That's a really actually a good tip because you're saying that if there's a particular X EXE you need, mm -hmm. uh, keep it in your NuGet packages folder and that's available to you. Yes. Okay, that's cool. I mean, assuming there is a, a NuGet package for it, mm -hmm. which there is in the case of XUnit. So then if I understand here, uh, you're saying if uh, there's an error level, yes. then bail. So if the that's tests right. fail, this deployment then would not happen? It would not happen. You would see in your output, you know, running unit test and then say, oh, error, it'll give you whatever output XUnit gives you mm -hmm. and it would not deploy. And that's because kudu sync uh, never would have happened, which means it never would have copied exactly. the results over. Exactly. And then where do those files go? They just get deleted or they just sit around? Yeah, eventually, yeah, they'll get deleted. They're no longer relevant. And if I go back up into the website and take a look at that, this is the uh, one that we just did, and look at view logs, I can see there it is. There yeah. it is. It's right there in the Azure dashboard as well. Yes. Very what cool. you see in here is pretty much identical to what you saw on the command line when you pushed. So we can effect uh, custom deployments, pretty much anything we want from sending out messages to running any executable that we have on that server, as well as unit tests at build time. Yes. It's Azure Friday.